Good afternoon. My name is Marquita Riley and I am the Student Programs Coordinator for SWE Headquarters. I want to thank everyone for you all joining us for this live learning opportunity, College Essays in the Common Application. If you need to ask a question during the webinar, please take the time to type it into the chat box as you all did with this first question here so we know that it works all well for you guys on your end. So go ahead and make sure you do that. You can ask questions during the presentation content and then we'll actually have a formal Q&A session later. Uh, one of our lovely moderators will let you know when you can start asking questions for that session. So don't worry about that right now. But other than that, if the questions aren't answered right away, right away while we're doing the presentation material, uh, we'll make sure to try to get to it during the Q&A session. Please remember that this is a live recording that will be available on demand within the Sheila classroom, as well as handouts that will be posted under the tab classwork in the Sheila classroom and it's also going to be an appropriate topic folder. So this topic would be under college prep series. So you'll see that in that session. So make sure to look out for that. We'll go back over this again, just in case you missed it. So don't worry about getting that right now. Um, after this presentation, uh, before the Q&A, we will be asking you to complete a survey uh, for feedback on the session. It will be available within the chat. So uh, we'll also post it as a QR code within the presentation content. Uh, but we'll also post it in the chat so you won't miss it. So make sure that you uh, stick around for that. Um, and now I'm going to hand it over to the lovely Haley Antoine, our Outreach Committee Chair-Elect, and she will now begin this presentation. Thank you, Marquita. Always a warm welcome. Good evening or afternoon, ladies, depending on your time zone. Like Marquita said, my name is Haley. And this evening, we're going to be talking about the Common Application and College Essays. So, Put yourself in, in this, uh, I'll put, be, pretend to be you right now. And so by the end of this webinar, I will be able to recognize the differences between the three most uh, common application decision types. If you don't exactly know what that means, don't worry, we're gonna talk about it. Um, I'll be able to identify the different application components. I'll be able to recognize the differences between the common application main essay and supplemental essays. And I will also be able to identify best practices to consider while writing college essays. Now, let's introduce uh, myself and Annie. Uh, I'll go first. Uh, my name is Haley. Uh, that's a little outdated. I used to be the Sweet Next Club's work group co-lead um, with Becca, who we'll introduce in a moment. But I am currently the Outreach Committee Chair-Elect for the Society of Women Engineers. Um, my day job, though, is a safety and crash readiness engineer at Toyota out of the Ann Arbor, Michigan area, although we are virtual at the moment. Um, and I graduated from Cornell University with a bachelor's in science in biomedical engineering. Annie, why don't you introduce yourself? Yep, uh, my name is Annie and I am the work, uh, transitions work group lead for SWE Next under student programs. Uh, so basically I help uh, high schoolers like you transition to college once you, once you graduate. So we do lots of programming along those lines. I am a water resources engineer at Arcadis in the DC area, DMV. And I graduated from Cornell as well with a with two degrees in environmental engineering. Thanks, Annie. Up next, we have Christine, whose video you unfortunately cannot see right now. But that is because, Christine, do you want to tell everyone? Of course. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm currently on the road. I am driving from Pennsylvania to Minnesota because I'm going to be starting my PhD in chemical engineering at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. So I'm very excited for that, and I'm sorry you can't see my lovely, lovely face, but that is okay because I hope to share some good content anyways through my voice. <laughs> um, so I was born and raised in Hialeah, Florida, so I have a bit of experience in moving to college. Um, I did my bachelor's in chemical engineering and my master's in material engineering at Drexel in Philly. Um, and in terms of clubs and extracurricular activities, I was involved in SWE in space with Society of Asian Scientists Engineers, in Alpha Omega Epsilon, a sorority for women in STEM, some undergraduate research, and also study abroad. My favorite SWE event has been the Engineering Night for Girls, which was a middle school outreach event, and it's why I'm still involved in outreach through K through 12 students. So if you have any questions about any of that, feel free to ask in the chat. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Christine. Julia. Hi everyone, my name is Julia. Um, I am also on the transitions work group uh, with Annie 
And I grew up in Massachusetts um, and I stayed in Massachusetts to go to college. Um, I'm currently studying at Northeastern. I'm getting my um, BS and MS in chemical engineering and I'll be done with both degrees in May. Um, and clubs and extracurriculars, um, I do club water polo, which I actually started in college. Um, I did Jump Start, which is a, a AmeriCorps um, volunteering organization. I also dog walk and um, do some other volunteering. Thank you, Julia. Our last panelist is Becca. Hi, I'm Becca. Um, I am in the Sweet Next Clubs work group, which is a lot of fun. I'm from New Orleans, um, but I moved around quite a bit due to the military. Uh, I am currently a junior uh, at Georgia Tech in mechanical engineering. Uh, and at Tech, I'm involved in SWE uh, as the VP of Community Outreach, so working with a bunch of SWE Next clubs, which is really fun. Uh, also, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, uh, Special Olympic Swimming, as well as um, what's called the Student Competition Center, uh, which is our automotive and robotics competition collaborative, so part of the Baja um, team and what's called Rec Racing. Um, and then I'm also a year-round intern with Sandia National Laboratories, so doing military research. Thank you, Becca. So if you forgot the names of any of those panelists, don't worry, there'll be a slide at the end with all of them. Um, if you have any questions brewing right now, feel free to put them in the chat and they can type a response to you or we'll hold it to the Q&A session so we can verbally respond. Quick reminder, this webinar is being recorded. All right, so let's get into it. What is the common application? So the common application is an application system used by over 900 colleges and universities. Um, on the common app, you can actually search to see if a school you're interested in is represented in that database. Um, if it's not, then there is a separate ap application system and you can find it through that individual school's uh, website. So within the common application, there's a common part, quote unquote, um, of the application that gets sent to each school that you're applying to. And then there are usually supplemental essays or different requirements for each school. So if you're a senior, I would highly encourage you, if you have not already done so, to make an account on the common application. These deadlines come up so much quicker than you think. Um, the website is www.commonapp.org. Um, also, the slides will be available afterwards, so if you want, you can just click on the link or Google it. Very easily, it will come up. Um, there's also a link on this, these slides that you'll have access to with tons and tons of informational videos that literally walk you through how to make an account, um, how to add schools, all those different things. Um, we're going to talk briefly about it and, um, you know, over the next hour, but it's always good if you're a little bit confused to look directly on the website. Um, also, make sure that you sign up with an email that you check regularly. Um, sometimes emails get blocked to a school email, for example. So if your high school has an email account for you, um, sometimes things will block through the security system. So you'll want to um, maybe make your own uh, email account that's appropriate um, and <laughs> something that you'll feel comfortable with admissions officers seeing. So not like, um, Glitter girl, one, two, three, four, seven star, something like that. You're probably not gonna want an admissions officer seeing an email like that, but maybe something simply like your name or something like that. All right, so we're gonna go through the steps of the common application. So add colleges, universities. So what does this mean? Um, basically, you're just adding colleges to a list. So you can add a maximum of 20 schools to your common application list. Uh, you can change them at any time. And the only time that you're really locked in is when you submit and pay for the application. Um, you can see each school's application deadline. So this is when the application is done and due. Um, no extensions will ever be made, uh, maybe in some circumstances if you negotiate with an admissions officer, but that is the hard deadline. Um, additionally, you can see if there's an application fee. Um, in 90, I'd say 8% of cases, there is an application fee for a school. Um, however, if you work with your high school counselor, um, you can go and request a fee waiver, but your high school counselor will know all about how to do this. Um, and depending on your circumstances, this is absolutely a great option. Additionally, it will talk about the different individual writing requirements that are separate from the main essay um, and also standardized test requirements. So 
Given um, the pandemic, I understand that maybe you haven't taken your SATs or your ACTs now, I'm talking to seniors right at this moment, um, and other tests may or may not happen, or maybe they're gonna be online. There, those types of requirements will be on the common application for each school. So you'll just have to check that out. I'm sure it's also widely publicized on their websites. I do know several um, undergraduate universities have already waived requirements. Others have said, okay, um, just submit your application and take it at another date, something like that. So it definitely is gonna vary from school to school, but you'll wanna check on those requirements. Um, and then a recommendation requirement. So if you missed our webinar last week, um, we talked about resumes and letters of recommendation. Um, you can find that information again in the Sheila classroom, um, but I'll briefly touch on what this, uh, what this recommendation requirement is right now. So um, what is a letter of recommendation? Briefly, it's something that a teacher or another adult in your life, um, maybe a robotics coach or a sports coach or a boss at work um, can write on your behalf. So those requirements will be on the com common application as well as um, requirements and recommendations from your counselor. Um, so oftentimes schools are going to want something um, like transcripts or some sort of um, profile of your school to be submitted through the common application. So you'll just check on that um, and you can easily add your recommenders um, within that area. So if you also apply early decision, so this is a hard requirement that you have to do. Um, we'll talk about early decision in, in a moment. Um, when you apply to that school, you and your parent must sign an agreement um, that you are applying early decision. You acknowledge all these different things. So you can add your teachers or community members as your recommenders. Um, it's easy to just add their email and what they end up doing is once they get that email, it takes them to a separate link where they can then virtually um, upload their, their letter to the Common Application System. So key terms, so early decision, early action and regular decision. So these are um, the three different types of applications that um, are options. Some schools have things like rolling admissions or something like that. Those are not um, super common for common application schools. Usually they're doing the, either of these three types of um, decision deadlines, but um, you can definitely just check out the school and see what they offer. So early decision. So usually, by the term early, um, you are submitting your application early. So this is around November, especially for our seniors. If you are interested in early submitting, early decision or early action, you definitely, definitely should open your common application um, now and, and get started. Um, so in addition to submitting early, you also receive the decision early. So it's usually in December. You have to sign a binding agreement stating that you are going to attend this school um, there are a few exceptions such as like financial aid or changes in um, family circumstances or things like that, but you do have to sign this agreement. Um, you can only apply to one school early decision. Um, and if you get into that school, you need to withdraw all your other applications um, because they know that you're going to that school. So there's no reason that you should be um, getting other acceptance offers from other schools. Early action. So this is also applying early as noted by early. Um, so you're applying to the school early and you're receiving a decision early, January, February, not as early as ED students will, um, but you are earlier than the regular decision students. So this is a non-binding contract though. So it's different than early decision um, because you're not obligated to go to the school, but it is the same as early decision in that um, it is a little bit earlier of a timeline. So some schools will offer single choice early action. So you have to kind of look at the um, application and the websites of the schools that you're interested in to see what colleges have single choice early action. Um, several Ivy League schools and other um, top tier universities will have a agreement with um, one another that you can only apply to uh, one of these, you know, I don't know, 10, 20 schools um, early action because they all have that agreement with one another. Um, so if that is a single choice early action, you are not allowed to apply to any other schools EA or ED. 
Um, and regular decision is basically just the regular um, deadline and you apply at a later date, later in December, um, and you receive your uh, notice around March or April timing. Maybe those timelines are a little shifted um, due to COVID, but all of that information will be on the common application or easily accessible on the individual university's website. Organize yourself. So my biggest recommendation is to figure out a best organizational method for yourself so that you can track different things like deadlines, application fees, supplemental essays, test scores, um, writing requirements, and recommendation requirements. So this is a very simple um, screenshot of the uh, uh, tracking um, uh, spreadsheet that I made for myself. So you can see the year 2015. Uh, I don't know how old some of you were, I think in middle school or elementary school. Um, but one of the things that I did was I had a, I couldn't find the spreadsheet that I used to track my actual applications, but I did find the spreadsheet that tracked um, the decision timing. So I put the college, I put when I was supposed to receive the decision, and then I also put the link so that I could easily access where that decision would be. Um, so you can uh, figure out what works best for you. I know some people maybe love writing things down um, on a you know, tangible piece of paper. Maybe other people love Google Drive or Google Sheets or something like that. So figure out something that works good for you so that you can track and make sure you don't miss any deadlines. So take a two second breather. I see Becca typing. If anyone has questions on any of these um, things, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll get to them in a moment. Or I know I'm sure Becca and Julia and, and Annie are, are type, type, typing away. So the main common application essay. So for the 2020 through 2021 application cycle, that's, that's this current cycle, um, you have a choice between seven essay prompts. I can't guarantee for those of you who are freshmen, sophomores, and juniors that these will be the same. However, um, this set of prompts was the same as last year. So if that trend continues, maybe this will be the same for next year's cycle um, or they're all, they, they might augment them slightly. Um, we don't really know, but we do know that they are trying to keep them more open and not as um, you know, rigid for students to be able to be a little bit more creative. So you can use these if you're um, not a senior as nice brainstorming opportunities. So in the link here, um, you can see www.commonapp.org slash apply slash essay prompts. Um, so you can feel free to look at them yourself afterwards. I'm going to go through them on the next slide. But if you want to do a deep dive into all of these prompts, um, you can definitely uh, check that out on your own time. So let's see what we've got here. Number one prompt. So we're gonna read through these. We're not gonna go in depth. I'm not about to tell you how to write each one of these essays, but I just wanna get your creative juices flowing so that you can think about, you know, oh, maybe this one sounds like this would be good for this part of my life. Or maybe this uh, sounds really similar to some funny story that I have that I think would be good for a, um, a college essay. Um, so we're gonna go through them now. If you want to, um, you know, ask uh, and talk to your parents about them later, I think it's good to just kind of uh, strike up conversation about these um, different ideas and brainstorm with others. So number one, some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If it sounds like you, then please share your story. Two, the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time when you faced a challenge, setback, or failure. How did it affect you? And what did you learn from the experience? Three, Reflect on a time when you questioned a, uh, or challenged a belief or an idea. What prompted your thinking? What was the outcome? Four, describe a problem you've solved um, or a problem you'd like to have solved. It can be an intellectual challenge, a research query, an ethical dilemma, anything that is of personal importance, no matter the scale. Explain its significance to you and what steps you took or could be taken to identify a solution. Discuss an accomplishment event or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. Describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that it makes you lose track of all time. Why does it captivate you? What or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? And seven, share an essay 
on any topic of your choice. It can be one you've already written, one that responds to a different prompt, or one of your own design. So you can see based on all of these options that it basically tackles anything you could possibly want. And if nothing appeals to you in those one through six options, you can come up with your own essay. So some tips and tricks. The biggest thing that you can do for yourself is start early. You may think December is far away, but you will get busy with other uh, school or activities, um, or maybe you just wanna watch TV one night. Um, you will run out of time very quickly, so it's great to start early. You wanna um, have multiple drafts of your essays. You wanna make sure that um, other people are looking at it as well. So on your first draft, um, you don't have to focus on being perfect and using these great words and making everything make sense and making sure you have the right comma or semicolon. Um, you just wanna put words on a page. So when you work through those multiple rounds of drafts, you make it more concise and then you meet your word count. Have as many adults as possible read your essays, like I said. So these can be teachers. I had um, two or three of my English teachers read my essays. Um, your, your high school counselors, your parents, older siblings, family members, um, maybe a mentor that you have. Maybe you're in a sweet next club. Maybe your sweet counselor, your sweet advisor can um, read your essays as well. All of those um, adults who have a, a maybe a bird's eye view can point out things that maybe might not make sense or um, areas that you can strengthen or areas that sound really, really good and really strong so they can give you all that constructive feedback. Additionally, your essay needs to tell a story and it should be your story. So the main essay has a word count limit of 650 words. So you really have to make every single word count. This is not an essay where you, um, you know, take, take a paragraph or so to have fluff. Um, I know that because I've been there. I've done that. I did it in high school. I'm sure I did it in college as well. Um, but for here, you want to get right to the point when you're writing this essay. Narrow the scope of your essay. So you don't have to include every single detail about yourself. You don't have to start off with, I was born on a blustery windy night and it was, uh, you know, 12, 13 a.m. in the morning and my mom was in labor for this many hours, like whatever. You don't have to start all the way at the beginning. Um, but think of like one or two things that make you a unique individual. So maybe this is a, a story about how you um, were a really great athlete and then you broke your leg and your ACL tour and something like that that's small enough of a of a uh, event that can be fleshed out into 650 words but don't start at the very beginning um, be yourself so you don't have to force a dramatic uh, metaphor or um, you know come up with antics that you know are not really you um, you don't have to go through and say oh my life is like a beautiful cloud and this is how it's like a cloud and blah 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 all that stuff um, <laughs> if, if that doesn't come to your mind right when you start writing then don't write about it um, each word counts. So you have 650 words, like I said. So you want to use precise and specific language. Um, you don't want to take up five words when you could supplement it with just one really good verb or really good adjective. Um, and colleges know if you're throwing in a big word for the sake of using a big word. Um, so if you don't typically use the word like amalgamation um, in your daily speech, then uh, don't put it in your essay. All right, so I know I, I made fun of the essays a little bit, but I'm getting it serious now about these supplemental essays. So some schools will require you to write additional essays. So what does this mean? They can literally range from 25 characters to 600 words, so basically another main essay. Um, some are optional, but by optional, it's one of those things that's like, oh, you definitely should be doing them anyway. Um, so these give the admissions committee additional insights about who you are, um, and so they can be really fun. Um, they still need to be strong, just as strong as your main essay. There's a happy person uh, writing her supplemental essays. Um, examples, these are fun. Um, why do you want to attend our school? What personal perspective do you feel can contribute to our school? What are your academic interests? So this might ask you to name a major or something like that. Um, expand on an extracurricular or work experience that was meaningful to you. What's your favorite word? Literally one word, you can only put one word there. Um, what are two adjectives your friends would use to describe you? 
Tell us about a place or community you call home. How has it shaped your perspective? Tell us about your interest in engineering or what you hope to achieve with a degree in engineering. Describe what appeals to you about our engineering school and how it specifically relates to uh, your engineering interests or aspirations. Write a letter to your future roommate. Design a course that all freshmen would take. So here, they're not asking you to um, list stuff, you know, especially on those engineering specific or major specific questions. They don't expect you to know every technical detail about, um, you know, F equals MA and the origins of the equation. That's, I know many of you have taken physics, I'm sure, but <laughs> you don't have to know, you know, all these, um, you know, derivations or anything like that. They're not looking for technical. They're looking for you to, um, you know, shine your personality through and get creative um, within these uh, spaces of even uh, 25 characters to 250 words to even more. Um, take this opportunity to let your personality shine through. Tips. All right. So when writing about why you would want to attend a specific school or study a certain major, so there were a handful that I had on this list. Um, you can see sometimes those uh, may come up. I think more often than not, many of my supplemental essays were specific to the school, literally just asking me, why do you want to attend um, this school? So tips for that. So mention precise things about the school, for example, um, like the name of a research group maybe you'd like to be a part of if you're interested in um, undergraduate research, a club you'd like to join, um, a class you'd like to take, something like that. Um, mention if you visited the campus before or if you've interacted with an alum. Um, and go beyond the main page of their website so they can see if you're like, oh, I really want to go to UCSD because UCSD is in San Diego. Um, the name of the school is University of California, San Diego. So they know that your school is in San Diego. So you have to go beyond that front page of the website, dig a little bit deeper um, and find out other details that, that really show that you're interested in the school um, and you're passionate about what they do there. So don't just mention the intermediate, but mention where you see yourself going in five to 10 years and how that school will help you get there. Um, how can you be an asset to that community? So um, this is kind of similar for like job interviews. This is a, this is a kind of strategy. You don't just say, oh, I wanna work at, um, I work at Toyota. So I say, oh, I wanna work at Toyota because it's a car company and I think cars are really rad. Like while that may be true, I have to go the additional step by saying, oh, but I think the perspective that I have with all of my, you know, volunteering experience with the Society of Women Engineers would be an asset to Toyota because I know that you do this outreach um, in the Ann Arbor area by helping parents install uh, child restraint systems. And I think that I would be a great member of that team. So it's very similar. Um, taking those interview tips and putting them into your essays. So how can you be a valuable member of that community? In addition, be creative and be yourself. Like I said, this, is, this goes for the main essay and this goes for these supplemental essays as well. Um, you just wanna make sure that you yourself are shining through. So some have really unique prompts, so you'll wanna use this to your advantage. So get into the prompts, like put your put yourself in the space, think about it while you're showering. Sometimes I have some of my best ideas when I'm in the shower. Um, or I don't know, think about it, you know, when you whenever you can and, and um, show your personality as you uh, get into this unique aspect of the prompt. So also, um, you want to make sure that you are writing about something that's not in your main essay or your activity section. So if in your main essay you hit on, you know, you broke your leg and your ACL and all that stuff and you're a great athlete, um, you don't necessarily need to include that in another essay, right? Because you've already touched on that. Um, so you'll want to make sure you're uh, highlighting different aspects of who you are. You can also re re, uh, reuse your material from school to school. Uh, just make sure you proofread. So I um, used to uh, volunteer for the admissions office at Cornell. I gave tours, and I cannot tell you, uh, one of the admissions officer's favorite story was, oh, if you're applying to Cornell, make sure you don't s submit your essay saying, I really want to go to Yale College and major in mechanical engineering um, because you sent that essay to Cornell. So make sure that you um, make sure and proofread and especially change the college name. All right. So there is, I want to note, a uh, for seniors, and I don't know how long they're going to have this question for. Maybe it will also be for the next application cycle, but I, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. There is an optional question on the common application currently 
um, about COVID-19. So this is how the question reads. Um, community disruptions such as COVID-19 and natural disasters can have deep and long lasting impacts. If you need it, this space is yours to describe those impacts. Um, colleges care about the effects on your health and well-being, safety, family circumstances, future plans and education, including aspect, uh, ac access excuse me, to reliable technology and quiet study spaces. Do you wish to share anything on this topic? So you'll select yes or no. Um, and then please use a space to describe how these events have impacted you. So this is a 250 word box that you'll be able to write about. Um, and the question, when you see it on your common application, it'll have some more detailed um, facts and questions uh, to um, kind of help you uh, consider what kinds of impacts that you might wanna talk about. So this might include um, illness, loss, um, housing and employment disruptions or shifting in family obligations. Um, so if those types of things uh, have happened to you, please use this space to talk about that. Um, I would caution against students taking the 250 words to say, um, I was offered this fantastic um, internship and I was just so devastated that it didn't happen and I, you know, had this great thing happen to me and then it was just taken away. Um, consider that some students will have had these really, really awful things happen during these times. And if you write about how you didn't have an internship happen, um, and another student talks about how their house was destroyed in a flood uh, recently, then I don't know, maybe an admissions officer might look at your, your essay twice and think, hmm, I don't know if we want someone who maybe uh, is so bent out of shape about um, you know, just an internship loss when they don't consider um, other types of uh, events that are happening in the world. However, I think that it's appropriate if you did something in place of maybe an internship that you didn't do or an experience that you didn't do and you said, oh, but I made the most of this situation. Um, and you can share in those 250 words how maybe you helped out in your community, how you, um, if you have a younger sibling, um, and your parents are, are essential workers, you took care of them um, during the day and you, uh, you know, made the most of the situation. Um, so I would just definitely um, try and make a positive spin on, on everything you can, even if there is something that's, you know, um, that has been really devastating to your family or to you, um, try and, and kind of close with something that is, but I have in some way learned something from it or in some way, um, you know, it, it's made me stronger. I know that's a little cliche, but um, that's my best advice on this question. There is really no right or wrong way to answer it, um, but this question is here for you um, on the common application. So the common application is not the only application system, like I said, so you'll just have to do a deep dive to make sure that um, your school is within the common application system. If it's not, then there will be a similar um, application system for your school and there are similar, the, the tips for the essays for those schools are the same, um, but you'll just have to check out on each school's website or on the common application website to confirm that your school is on there or not. All righty, so I know I went through so, so much information. Um, we are going to open it up to our lovely panel of panelists, Julia, Becca, and Christine. Um, and Annie will start pulling the questions now. So feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, while we wait for our first question, I just wanted to ask Ella panelists to give a very brief overview of how their common app process went when they applied for colleges back when that happened. <laughs> and so just like let everybody know how that worked for you, what things you might have like learned specifically that would be helpful. That would be great. Who wants to start? Let's start with Julia because you're the first on my video screen. <laughs> okay, um, so when I was applying uh, through the Common App, I had, um, I made, I was very organized like Haley. I had my spreadsheets. Um, and my original spreadsheet, I think, had probably like 25 schools on it. I was planning on applying to all of these. I put them all in my Common App. And then as I went through them, I realized that it wasn't really worth applying to them all. So that's one of the really good things about the Common App that lets you like look at all the places and then you're like, oh, well, am I really going to go to California? Like, 
I know I wouldn't because I'm from Massachusetts. Like I just don't want to be that far away. So it was easy to just eliminate schools that way. And I think I ended up applying to four schools and only three of them were on the Common App. So that helped me a lot with that. Um, and the essay that I chose, um, I decided to do a very generic essay about, um, like a generic topic, I would say, about like why um, I chose my plan of study. So that one um, could be applied to a lot of different um, situations. Sounds good. Um, how about Rebecca? Hi, so I also made a spreadsheet, but I had looked at all the schools and said, here's my top few. I'm going to apply early action. And if I don't get into those, I'm going to apply regular decision to everything else. Um, I was fortunate enough to, to get into the, the schools that I was looking at. Um, so after early action, I was done. Um, because honestly, once you're a senior, you get there, you're, you're in the middle of these apps and you just want them to be done. Um, so, so definitely, you know, get those essays done as, as soon as possible. Um, another thing I went through was um, be willing to make yourself vulnerable when writing these essays. Uh, I went through a lot of like, kind of like, just would sit in my room and think uh, about, you know, my journey so far. Um, and that really helped me out in, in kind of being able to tell my story. Um, something that a lot of people think to do is, oh, I'll send my essay to a bunch of my friends and my teachers and everyone. Um, but what you actually find out is um, once people go through your essay and give you all these tips, the essay no longer sounds like you. Um, so if you, it is, it is perfectly okay for you to give your essay to, you know, a teacher or someone, but I would really suggest you limit how many people you give your essay to because you want to make sure that it's your voice and not someone else's. Um, I actually, I had written this whole thing about robotics and I came to the conclusion for my common app that it just, it wasn't who I truly was. Um, so I actually wrote about an experience I had. I worked at a Boy Scout camp as a lifeguard. Um, and I wrote about my experience uh, through that um, and, and teaching this young boy in a life-saving class um, who turned around two weeks later and saved a kid's life. Uh, and you know, it's, it's about the impact that you have on people. Um, and because my, the common app that, uh, the essay that I chose to write about, it was like an event, something that, it, that sparked a realization and a period of growth in you and what you learned from it. Um, so through that story, you know, I showed, you know, I, you know, I really, I really grew through that. It, it made me have a complete turnaround in how I thought about the world and other people. Um, so those little stories, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to write about clubs and everything you do. It's, it's those little stories that really make us who we are uh, and be willing to write about those. And then lastly, Christine, even though I can't see you, I know you're there. <laughs> um, so I also had a spreadsheet when I was applying to colleges. I think it really helps with organization and making sure that you're keeping track of uh, when your transcripts are getting sent, when your letters of recommendations are getting sent, and making sure that they actually happen. Um, because, you know, sometimes these teachers and uh, guidance counselors can get so busy with all the students that they have that sometimes they miss a, a letter or two. So it's good to keep track of all of those things on your end as well. Um, I ended up applying to, I think, 15 schools, which was a lot, and I would not recommend it at all. Um, because in the end, I think I was really deciding between three to five schools. So I think I spent a lot more time than I needed to applying to all these schools that I really wasn't that interested in, and I only really realized that after I had gotten accepted. Um, but in terms of the Common App essay, I chose to write about an obstacle, and I kind of just had fun with my essays. I didn't really put um, too much of a mental pressure on myself to write about something that was so changing for me. Um, instead, I wrote about the first day that I worked at my dad's restaurant and how I spilled a bunch of sauce everywhere and it just was a huge catastrophe. And by the time that rush hour was over, it was really a a tough moment for me to sit back and be like, wow, I messed that up. <laughs> but uh, moving forward and learning about how to work in a restaurant and work in fast paced environments really helped me for prepare me for college and being prepared for managing multiple classes. And it's kind of like managing multiple receipts and thinking about different things at the same time. So it's 
uh, it was a good way for me to really reflect on some of the different parts of my life and still have fun writing these stories to show to officers, uh, the admissions officers, uh, different sides of my personality. Yeah, I, I think 15 schools sounds like a hell of a lot, and that's <laughs> impressive that you did that. <laughs> um, I also not recommend more than, you know, whatever amount. I also realized in retrospect that, um, you know, some of the schools didn't even have the right majors for me. I was just applying for, um, I don't know if it was my parents' sake or for the fact that I thought I should just apply. Um, but make sure that you're kind of narrowing down that that list because it's definitely not worth um, applying to nearly 20 colleges um, and it adds up so quickly because you have to apply to uh, pay for the school application you have to pay to get your test scores sent you have to you know pay for this that and the third so um, yeah like Christine I would definitely <laughs> narrow down as much as you can uh, Annie we have another question yeah, um, quickly, Sophia said, asked about writing supp supplemental essays, getting chances of being accepted. If I recall correctly, I thought a supplemental essays are required depending on the school. Um, they, some schools don't have supplemental essays. Well, yeah, so. if they do have them, though, I thought they were required. Is that right? Not all of them are required. Not all? Okay. Um, would that inc increase your chances if you answered all of them? Um, there's really no right or wrong way to answer that question. I would just recommend that you take every opportunity you possibly can to show the admissions team who you are as a person. And if there's an optional essay, um, it is a great uh, opportunity to show who you are. Okay. Siri has a rather deep question that I'm not quite sure how much we can uh, answer here. But how do you avoid feeling overwhelmed by all the essays you need to write? and everything else in the application process and your life. <laughs> so one thing that I was told going into senior year is you have to pretend that the college, the college application process is like another class. Um, so for me, that meant, you know, maybe taking a study hall or, you know, you almost have to, however you schedule your homework assignments and different things, um, you know, put those in as, a, as, an, as another homework assignment. Um, you know, you don't have to write the essay in one night, but, you know, say, make, make yourself a, a spreadsheet with deadlines and say, you know, by the end of August, I want my major common app essay done or the outline done and then your first draft done. It's just like another English assignment. Um, so it's really a factor of how you organize yourself. Uh, there's, there's a lot going on. So the earlier that you can kind of list out your schools um, and make that plan, the easier it's going to be on you. One thing I'd add is that um, I recommend doing all early action because um, as it got to like the end of that first semester and I had midterms, especially with AP classes, I was quite overwhelmed. So I was very happy to have started early and gotten everything in by November, I think is the date. Um, so that really helped me a lot. Um, but the other thing is that remember, like this is like a very hard and stressful time. So it's okay to feel overwhelmed sometimes. Um, just work through that like you do any stress. Um, I exercise a lot. So I was really exercising a lot um, during that uh, semester, but it is, it is gonna be hard. It's a lot of work and it's stressful. So you do have to recognize that. Also, don't be afraid to ask for help. Like Julia was saying, it is a very stressful time. It's okay to feel overwhelmed. You know, being overwhelmed by everything going on is not a bad thing. But I found it really helpful to talk to friends about my essays and brainstorm ideas with uh, other people and kind of narrow down what would be interesting to them. Because I think if a story is interesting to me, it might not be interesting to everyone. So maybe ask your friends, your parents, siblings, people in your family, or even your guidance counselors can be there to be another ear for you to bounce ideas off of. Good point. Um, one last quick question before we do our final wrap up, I guess. Um, what, for everybody here who remembers what they wrote about, what was the most fun or favorite or wild essay that you wrote for a common app essay or a supplemental essay? 
Um, starting with uh, Julia again. Let's go. <laughs> Um, my favorite essay was I wrote about this one experience that I had with a club and it was something that I couldn't show on just the Common App in general and that's why I loved it. Um, I had like helped start this club in my um, school with a friend and we like contacted this organization and did this activity with them and like brought in a speaker and it was awesome. But there was no like place for me to write that in the like, what club were you in? So I really enjoyed it because I could like actually talk about an experience. Um, and that was a supplemental essay. So I didn't like have to go into like a more story and like tell about myself. I just was able to explain one thing I did in a better way. Rebecca? Honestly, like as far as like crazy or wild, I really don't have any. Um, but for some reason, I remember a lot of my essays being like super emotional. Um, honestly, for, for me, I, I'm going to be honest, for, I, I don't like sitting and, and talking about myself. Um, so a lot of my essays were almost a thank you to the people who um, had really helped me out. So there was there was one essay in particular. Um, there was a mentor uh, who mentored me through First Lego League, so elementary school robotics, uh, and, and is still today one of my greatest mentors. Um, and I had written about how much he had inspired me um, into engineering. Um, it, was, it was for some, from like a, a scholarship essay uh, for NCSU. Um, and I just remember like sitting there and, and just, like I had sent him the essay um, and it was like my final like really big thank you to him. Um, so it wasn't like super fun necessarily, but it, I remember it being like the most meaningful essay that I had pretty much ever written in my life. Um, so, so it's definitely not, not the happiest thing, um, but it, it just... But it be, could be called your favorite. <laughs> it, it, was, it was definitely my favorite. Um, yeah, senior year college writing, Becca was quite the emotional bean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Christine, last one. All right, I have two stories. <laughs> the wildest essay was to write a poem or a piece of text from the perspective of an inanimate object. So I wrote a poem about being a pair of glasses, <laughs> and seeing the world <laughs> from a table. So that was the wildest one. And then the one that I had the most fun with was an essay prompt that was a supplemental essay that was celebrate your nerdy side. Um, so I chose to write about how um, I used to take ballet classes in high school and one day the teacher was saying like, you know, when you extend your arms and legs, think about them like vectors and you're stretching yourself out. And I was also taking physics at the time and I was like, you forgot the normal vector, like that's a, that's a pretty important vector. So I wrote about how like I liked to tie my physics knowledge and what I was doing in ballet and how I was really happy that I could actually apply something that I was learning in my physics class to ballet so, and art that I wasn't expecting to. So I had fun with that essay and I, I like to think it's my quote, quote, craziest one. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, do you remember your, any of yours? I did write an essay about how I was a total anime and manga nerd when I, when I applied to Yale. <laughs> I don't know if that's what caused me to not get in, but it was a fun essay to write. <laughs> Marquita, do you remember any of yours? Let me tell you something. <laughs> Remembering them, I'm just glad that I got through them and got into university. That's, that's the <laughs> biggest part. But I don't think I, I have anything that was fun or crazy, but I have to relate to Becca that most of the time when I was writing my essays, it was more on the emotional side. Um, <laughs> just because, you know, you tap into that, like, tell, tell us who you are. And so then you realize, <laughs> like, who you are is kind of emotional. So that was usually what <laughs> I was Tell us who you are about. got me. Oh, my goodness. You yeah. Just, and you're like, like you who am I? <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> Existential crisis. <laughs> yeah, you're I, I will say <laughs> most, of the, most of the apps are either like, "Have you become a part of your community?" Um, what do you want? Basically, it's the "What do you want to be when you grow up?" But you mm -hmm. sit there and you're like, "I have to decide that now." Um, yeah. So, so you like honestly, if all else fails with these essays, really take the time and think about how far you've come. Um, <laughs> pat yourself on the back. Um, and use this as, as a time of reflection, uh, because to me, it's really an important part of the journey as you go through your senior year. 
Yeah, definitely. That, that is a nugget right there. That is a nugget. <laughs> Mega is always dropping nuggets of wisdom. Um, I, I took some of those supplemental essays that were, they were listed on that slide. And one of my favorite ones that I still remember to this day, because it's become a family joke, um, was write a letter to your future roommate. And I um, wrote something in a sentence, I'm not going to say it now, um, that I literally thought like meant the words on the page. But apparently to my um, naive nature, there was a, another meaning that was a tad inappropriate that my parents caught while they were um, editing my essay. And so it kind of just become a family joke that I like use this sentence. And so um, <laughs> I oh, no. it's good that I didn't uh, send that letter to my future roommate um, as it was originally written. So that was my, that's my wild essay story. Um, well, thank you for um, yes. <laughs> questions in the chat. Um, if you have any more, you can send them to sweenex at sweet.org. Um, we're going to transition now into our feedback survey. So we really, really value your feedback. Um, we have a little bit more to cover, just a few minutes, but we're going to, um, if you don't have a smartphone available, um, Marquita is about to put the uh, link to the survey in the chat. So please take um, a minute or two to take our survey and I will be right back with you after that time. All right, take about 30 more seconds. All right, thank you everyone for your feedback. Um, we really value this because this is uh, really the first um, you know, online series that the Student Programs Committee has been doing. And so we are super excited to continue to do these in the future and your feedback definitely helps us do that. All right, so like Marquita said, um, in the Sheila classroom, which she will um, send you an email about how to access this information, um, there are additional resources. Also, these slides will be posted, but you can look for things like this worksheet that's posted, um, which gives you space to kind of work through some questions that you may be having, um, plan out um, essays, and then there's links to additional resources, which can help you um, dig a little bit further into the common application or College Board or other things like that. Um, there is a worksheet for each webinar that we've done for this uh, four-week series. So if you um, didn't get to attend a previous webinar, but you'd like to kind of work on these activities, they are in the uh, Sheila classroom, and Marquita will point you to that. So I just want to give a small plug for what uh, this program is that we're all part of. Of right now. Um, I know obviously most of you or all of you should be sweet nexters if you've registered for this um, for this series, but uh, if you are not super familiar with the program, um, it is a five-year-old program and it is um, kind of owned and operated by the Student Programs Committee. So those are um, the fantastic ladies that have been on the call tonight are part of the Student Programs Committee. It's volunteer driven um, by uh, ladies and, and, and gentlemen part of the Society of Women Engineers. Um, it's an opportunity for girls to begin exploring um, and preparing for college and engineering. Um, seniors in high school look for uh, in the spring around February or March timeframe um, an opportunity to apply to over $800,000 in scholarships. Um, and we also provide college prep opportunities just like this one um, and our awards and recognition program is fantastic um, it happens uh, every single year and our um, winners were actually just notified just the other day for our annual conference awards 
and it's free. So you got all those great benefits within Sweenext. Um, also, Sweenext Clubs, which um, maybe not all Sweenexters know about, uh, is a, another fantastic program that brings Sweenexters, so all you individuals together um, into a club that uh, you can kind of learn and grow with other like-minded students um, and explore engineering together. So if you're interested and want to learn more about Sweenex Clubs, you can email sweenexclubs at sweet.org. Um, what can Sweenex Clubs do? So the direction is basically up to you and your friends and whoever you can get involved in the club. Um, you can help people in the community through volunteering. Um, we see a lot of FIRST Robotics or VEX Robotics teams become Sweenex Clubs. Um, you can have SWE members come and talk about engineering and careers or maybe even college majors like Julia or Becca would come and talk to your students about their majors, um, likely virtually. Uh, and uh, maybe you have someone, um, a STEM professional who can give you a tour of um, you know, their workplace or something like that, um, or do some sort of STEM outreach for younger students. So I think that Sweetex Clubs are fantastic because um, right now maybe you're doing virtual school. A lot of these activities can be done virtually. So it's a great time to still be able to get um, your peers together and um, have a great time exploring STEM. So next week, we will see you right back here um, for our final um, webinar in this series, Financial Aid and Scholarships. We've got two fantastic panelists, an instructor at the Colorado School of Mines, and a fantastic um, engineering mama who is actually Becca's mother. Um, so she has lots of insights as well as our um, instructor from uh, School of Mines on um, Financial Aid and Scholarships. And Annie will be leading this session. So we really hope to see you all there. Um, thank you so much for attending. Again, if you have any questions, um, you can email us at sweenex uh, at sweet.org. Thank you so much, Haley. I am going to take it from here. Again, make sure that you fill out that survey if you have not already. I see we already had around 22 responses, so thank you for that. I appreciate that so much. Um, again, the survey link is within the um, within the chat box, so make sure you uh, get that link and fill that out if you have not already. I'd like to take the time to thank our speakers, our panelists. You all did an amazing job today, as always. I appreciate all of your responses to questions, as well as the content itself. I know 100 years ago when I went to school, as I always say, I wish I had each and every one of you all <laughs> with me on the journey. And I'm sure everyone who's been on this uh, in this session would probably agree that it's great information. So I appreciate that. Thank you to all of you all for attending today, uh, the college essays and the common application webinar. Um, if you have any questions, as we stated before and said many times, make sure to email us at sweetnext at sweet.org. We can't stress that enough. We are here for you through that email. Um, an on-demand recording will be made available of this webinar for those that weren't able to get here a little earlier. I saw we had a couple people that came in later. Don't worry. We have you covered. You won't miss a thing. We'll make sure that the slides, the handout as Haley went over is available with additional resources for you as well. Um, as well as all of the previous recordings will be made available in the classroom. You can also check out the YouTube playlist for Sweetnex TV. It's available there, but all of that will be made available within the classroom. Um, if you go, once you receive the link, you will see a tab for classwork. Make sure you go to the topic college prep series and you'll have all of the information from what we have done thus far up until today. You'll have access to all of those resources. We will be sending you an email with all of this information. So please don't feel like you're stressed trying to remember it all right now. I will make sure you guys get a post event email from this session. So you'll have all of that content there and you'll be able to access all of those additional resources. Thank you again for attending this session. I appreciate each and every one of you and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone. <laughs>